Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about uh, database designs and we're going to uh, see how we create database schemas. Uh, we have another person that's going to be joining us later in the tutorial that's going to show us some uh, real world database design techniques and approaches. So uh, till then, let's just go through the some of the main uh, concepts of database design and database uh, data modeling techniques. Uh, okay, um, so we're, okay, why do we design databases, right? So we, when we're working uh, for to achieve some goals or to achieve to solve some problems when we are working in a and and in an organization or an, on a project, uh, we need to have a correct uh, representation of data, right? So to achieve this uh, certain goals, when we are working with database, uh, we need to invest the time uh, to design the good uh, database so that it makes sense, right? So in the end, when it's more like uh, it's more likely to end up with a database that meets that should meet your end and that can easily uh, query uh, and accommodate changes. So, so we're gonna see what is the proper database design and uh, we're gonna see how to, how you can access uh, your data accurately. And you're going to, we're going to see how we should um, describe or we should provide uh, an accurate database design approaches okay um so yeah as, as always when we are working with uh database we have some uh rules that we need to follow right so we have some steps and in order to have a good database which uh, a database design which can be a data that's that can uh divide your that can store your data into um subject-based tables or uh, that can store your data in a, in a non-redundant way, right? So you need to provide access with, with that data and uh, it requires to, it may require to join these tables together if you're, if you're working on big uh, uh, database or big relational databases. And it's, it's going to help you support and ensure an accurate and an accuracy and uh, integrity in your data and so it also helps you when you are uh, for data processing and reporting uh, when you're working on your projects so uh, the design process has uh, the following steps uh, the sorts of design process that we follow and uh, the first one is to determine the purpose of your database so this is going to help us prepare uh, this is the first step that is going to prepare for the for the next step, right? So why are we designing your database? This is the first uh, question that we are answering. And the second one is uh, to organize your data, right? So you have to gather your data, all types of data that you might want uh, to, you might want to record in your database and you're going to um, organize this data as required. Uh, so after you have, okay. So after you have this uh, required data that that you are going to use for your uh, to create your uh, projects, then you need to create a table, right? So you need to have you have to divide the information the information or data that you have and store it in some sort of tables, right? So you have to divide the data into tables and choose the what are going to be the major entities or subjects. So, um, for example, if you are if you are going to be uh, building tables for uh, sales prediction, or if you're working on sales database, then some of the information for the customer or the the supplier could be uh, considered as the database that the database tables right so we might have a customer tables and supplier table or uh, maybe orders or product tables so this is a, a basic example of database that we 
used in the real world. So the major entities are going to be, for example, if it's going to be the product, then if it's going to be the supplier, or it could be the name, uh, it might have an ID or it might have an address and some and others. So these are going to be the, the main entities. So you're going to identify these things and then you're going to form a table and you're going to create your own table using this this uh, entities and uh, records. So after you have uh, your table, then you you determine what are the, going to be your columns, right? So you decide what type of data you need to track uh, about that uh, subject so you can record it in the table. So let's say in the customer table that in this, it might have a name, right? An address or a phone number or or any other information. So this is, uh, these are going to be, these are going to be your columns. So each record in your table con contains some sets of columns so so that you can sort. For example, if you have a customer table, then you might store a name, address, and so on. And so on. So uh, each record record contains a data about a specific record, let's say a customer, and each uh, field contains the address of that um, specific customer, uh, and the use for uh, creating relations. Right? So uh, each table should have its, should include a column or a set of columns that, that are going to uniquely identify uh, a row that's going to be stored in the table. Right? So uh, it should have a unique item. Uh, it could be an ID or it could be some field and some value in that column and, and uh, it's called, this is called the primary key, right? So that's going to uh, uniquely identify that record and uh, so yeah, so it must, so this key must always have a value, right? You cannot uh, have a null value for a primary key and if a column can be, be can become unsigned or if it's it's a missing a missing a value, then it cannot be considered as a primary key, and you need to consider this type of things before actually designing your database. And you should always choose a primary key that whose value is not going to to change. I mean, it might change, but when you are working with relational database, then this is going to be to make this is going to make your whole database uh, complicated. You you're going to have to change every record that's related to the to those key. So it's best to avoid uh, such type of situations, right? So and then the next one is you create the tables, right? So you create the relationships. So now that you have your tables, then you need a way to bring this information together to have a to have a meaning, right? So uh, you would have to create uh, relationships between those uh, those tables. So, so you might have many-to-many uh, -many relationships, one-to-one -one relationships. There are diff different types of relationships that are suited for uh, specific uh, product need or project need. So you're going to uh, set up your relationships, and then you and then you refine your design. So. So when you're refining your design, then this is you go back and you check if those if you're missing anything, and and then you normalize, right? So the so you have to apply the normalization rule here. So you can apply these rules as the next step in your design. So you use this rule to see if your tables are actually structured correctly, and uh, it's the process of applying some rules to your dat database design, and um, it's going to it's going to be useful after you have represented all of the informations in all of your data in in your design. So the idea the idea is to to ensure that you have divided all of your information items into a proper table, right? So it's 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 going to help you design your uh, database and it's going to make it less redundant. So we have different type of uh, normalizations. So uh, so when you are using this normalization rules, uh, it's at at every step that you have to ensure that your design has at least one 
one at least it meets one of the rules right so these rules can be uh, stated as normal forms so there are usually five forms that are that are commonly used and so so it's one three four five so th these are the normal normal forms and um that's that's the rules that you have to follow so if you're uh, if your design meets the first rule then it's, it might be considered first normal form Right. So, does does anybody has anybody worked with uh, a database and has managed to normalize a form? There are tables. Or what is the difference between this um, normalization techniques? Maybe you guys are quiet. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, if maybe someone. You yes, can hear you. yes. Okay. Uh, would you like to tell me what uh, what are the some types of normal forms? The first and the uh, okay. Okay, I'll just go ahead and say I guess. So um, in the normal in the first uh, normal form, then. There are the first rule is that your table should con should not should contain uh, should have like a single value right you should not have multiple values in a single uh, table say right so for example if you have a customer and that let's get back to that customer table then if you have uh, let's say customer called Alice and if Alice bought uh, some books uh, then she might have uh, an ID an address a phone number or so the products that she bought, or that could be the book that she bought, and it could be multiple books, right? So when we are when you are storing your data, and when you are you storing your data in your database, you might have specified them all of the books that she bought in a in a single row, right? So to in the first normal form, that should not be the case, right? Every sale should have a single value. So in, you have to split your uh, records and you have to uh, make every sale have a single value. So you have to, your records need to be unique. And that's the first normal form, right? So in the second normal form, then it has to meet first to, to, in, to even be in the second normal form. It needs to have that. It, it needs to be in the first normal form and it needs to have a single column and primary key. So that, that doesn't functionally depend on any subset of, so another key, right? So you should have a, a single column and primary key. And and this is going to be uh, in your second normal to uh, to move from second normal table into third normal table, then we need to divide. Uh, okay, our database again. So that's that's some of the first steps that we follow. And when you are designing, uh, it's critical to have a su su successful implementation of the database management system. So when you are normalizing, uh, it's 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 a process of helping produce data in the system that are going to be cost effective right so this is the uh, the main process that we follow to design our database so uh this so let's talk about data modeling right so what is data modeling uh so so it's a process of simplifying the diagram or data model of a software system by applying certain form of techniques right so we create visual representation of our system or our entire system to to communicate uh, between the structures of the data, right? So we use different types of elements we use. So this is a usual uh, visual representation. So we, we have different types of uh, text element or symbols that are going to be used in our data modeling tool. So it's, it's a way to picture your data model is to 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 understand your data model, just picture it as an, a blueprint for a house or a building. So 
that's going to be uh, the plan that's going to assist you in your uh, production, right? So it involves expressing that information through text and symbols. So, um, so there are different types of data model, right? So uh, the most common ones, uh, this is actually the the widely used um, models are conceptual, logical, and physical models. So there are so okay. So in the conceptual model, it's it's the first step that you uh, it's the first data modeling technique that you have to first visually represent your data, right? So you have to represent the concepts and the relationship between them, and you have to identify. Uh, a higher level of user view of the data, right? So, um, so instead of like having the detailed database, then you just focus on establishing the visual characteristics of those fields, those relationships, and and those entities themselves. So, and then you follow the logical model, which is uh, it's going to define the structure of the data, and it's. It's used to for specific projects since it's, the main purpose is to develop a technical map or rules in your data structure. And in the physical data in data model, um, it defines how your data is physically stored in your data. So it's used. It might be used for uh, specific modeling where um, some columns include uh, specific types of entities and attributes. So uh, this designs the internal uh, schema, right? This is where designing your schema comes to place. So the purpose is to actually implement your database. So this is the the main uh, types of database, and there are some examples that um, that we see uh, in in data modeling. Uh, so the first one is the ER hierarchical and network and relational. So these are the main uh, types of relational models and we also have a star schema and star schema is actually uh, the most common in uh, data warehouse and it's the simplest right so it's it's widely used to develop uh, in a, a data warehouse and in a dimensional data mart and it includes more fact more facts and indexing any number of tables right so um so these are going to be your basic uh, terminologies that you use in your database, right? So when you are designing your data model, uh, for example, let's take a look at the ER, the ER model. Okay, mm. right. So do you guys have any questions so far? Um. Is what I'm saying making sense? Okay. Um, okay, can you excuse me for a moment? Sorry. Right, sorry about that. Okay, so um, when we are talking about this type of uh, database models, for example, let's talk about um, okay, the relational model that, the, so it, this one is the most common one, right? So it sorts your data into tables. Uh, it could be relation that are known as relations and it
والله ما اعرفش ايوه انا كده تمام Hello? Can you hear me? Um, um, yes, we can, Malit. Um, I think uh, Nardus's um, internet just dropped. Um, yeah, so um, hold on until uh, we contact her. Uh, Malit, are, were you going to say something else? Uh, no, I'm um, just not hearing anything, so that's why. Okay. Okay, apologies for that. My intermission just dropped for a moment there. Okay, so okay, so um, we were talking about uh, data models, right? So uh, in hierarchical uh, data model, so we arranged. Okay, hi, uh, can you guys hear me? I think. Okay. Uh, so where did I, I, I don't know where I left off. I was talking, you guys were quiet, so. Um, so this is going to be, these are the basic concepts that we, that we need to know when we are working with data modeling and when, uh, when we are designing our database. And so, um, so, one another of data modeling method is the star schema, right? So, um, so star schemas are are like they're structured in a star way. So we have uh, the fact the fact table that's that that we that's going to be represented in the center. So it's it's actually firstly used for for because of snowflake schema so it's it's an effective or it's an efficient way to handle 
uh, basic queries. So this star schema, schema is another type of uh, modeling technique. Uh, okay, so without introduction, if we have, uh, if we maybe we can talk about this week's uh, project, right? So what are what we are going to do is we're going to design a database schema and we're going to uh, follow some uh, follow your own schema uh, database schema design method and you're going to um, store those uh, values that you've you've uh, that, that that are the result of your back back test right so so when you are doing your back test run then you you get those um, parameters right so uh, you might have uh, some values that that are that are going to be the product of your practice right so you're going to store this uh, and you're going to integrate it with kafka and store it in a somewhere in a data warehouse or in aws rds and you're going to um let users uh so you're going to let users interact with your front end and um, it should be accessing your your front end should also uh, interact with your database, right? So when users want, to, uh, when users specify some uh, parameters, then based on that parameters, if you already have uh, a back a backtest that's already run executed, then it should be stored in your database, right? So it should it should not execute another backtest uh, run. So it should just fetch the result of that uh, result or the result of some scene and display it to the user. So this is where your database comes to place, right? So uh, you're going to use it uh, in such a way. So just to give you a big picture. Um, so if you don't have any question, then Mahalit, if you are here, then you can continue. Okay, do you guys have a question? Okay, go ahead, Malik. Then you can continue. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you share my screen? So, So what about now? So let me try to make it more loud, but so as Nardo stated that there are basic database schema which we have um, so I'm going to present the how to start database design um, so does my screen is visible So basically database is uh, a kind of storage which you will store your day-to-day uh, -day business activities or your day-to-day -day records to it. So you can manage as a storage to, to update your data, also to access as well as this recovering uh, methodology will be used uh, for database, uh, database design um, as well as the resultant term which is similar to database is data warehouse which is more a bit complex uh, than in the, that, that can include number of database 
and integrated into data warehouse. So uh, this will be used for optimized data gathering for information from different source in order to analyze. And that will result to your business reportings uh, and that will answer your questions toward this specific business problem. Uh, and from the data structure wise, the database is more normalized and structured data as it, the name indicates it's a relational database so it having an entity with its relationship uh, from the data warehouse perspective the, the data structure for data warehouse is the normalized data structure which is, it is in reverse of this normalization so uh, from the normalized data structure perspective we don't have any redundancy or data dependency between uh, your data entry, but in the normalized data structure, you will you will allow to have this data dependency as well as redundancy, but it have its own drawback from the accessibility perspective and the response time which you have uh, in your query. You don't have to run multiple queries, but, uh, multiple join query, but you have to wait some time to extract data from data warehouse as, but the relational database or the database which is normal which have this normalized data structure is somehow easy and it have fast response time for uh, your data and from data timeline perspective uh, this data warehouse will, will store this historical data we, you can consider it as a delta data lake which considers a number of, or a number of years data or which can store in uh, huge data in terabyte or petabytes. So the database is somehow smaller than that and it's more or less providing the, your day-to-day -day data processing and transaction uh, activities in the database. So the, from the storage perspective, database is more than, smaller than this data warehouse. And the, from the optimization perspective, data warehouse is optimized to perform analytical processing, which is running large and complex queries to your data. So this is the one which is uh, responsible to decrease your uh, response time to your specific query. But uh, from the terms of optimization, this database is quite quick and it will deliver speedy data from your storage. So according to the demand of the situation, you will choose either database or data warehouse to design for your specific problem. And from the analysis perspective, dynamic, uh, this data warehouse is a dynamic and quick analysis tool for data. But this database is a transactional functions which carried out through the analytics is possible but difficult to perform due to this uh, complexity of the normalized data. So as you go down to this normalization, uh, you have to change data into different forms. So that will bring the complexity from the analysis perspective. So you don't get a uh, quick because uh, you will perform number of cost joins to get structured data. So that will make them more complex from the database perspective. Uh, when we come to this uh, normalized and denormalized tables, uh, as we go through the introduction, this normalized data are stored in database and denormalized data are store, uh, stored in what you call it, data warehouse. So normalization is a process of uh, like uh, reducing this dependency and redundancy from data. So its basics will explain that this is a process of creating a set of schema to store non-redundant and consistent data. You don't have to lose data or data lake. Uh, from the normalization process, you can combine any, you can read, you can have a redundant data as well as um, a dependent data each other and this will help you to query speedily. So that's the main difference between them. Just 
the purpose of this normalization is to reduce the redundancy and inconsistency between data. And uh, for denormalization purpose, you don't have to reduce this uh, redundancy or inconsistency, but you will achieve faster execution time by running uh, a query to uh, unstructured data. Uh, and the technology that they use is online transactional processing system, which emphasize on making insert update delete uh, anomalies faster and storing these quality data. But in the normalized or in data warehouse sense, you will use this online analytical processing system, which emphasize on making search and analysis faster. Uh, so crude operations are uh, mostly allowed on this database and also this analytical process which needs certain analysis will be done on data warehouse. Uh, from the data integrity perspective, uh, like how, how can you protect the data loss or data lake you, while you're storing your data? Uh, uh, sorry. Mm. So from data integrity perspective, uh, you have to maintain this data integrity in your database because uh, it is necessary to have, uh, to follow this the acid property of the database nature. But when you go to this data warehouse, you don't have, maybe you can, you cannot able to retain this uh, data loss or data leak. So you have to learn that to some extent, your problem should have to consider these things while you are doing database design. And also based, based on your use case, some use case may add this redundancy or if you add redundancy, it doesn't make any tangible difference. But in some case, there, no, there is no uh, it's not allowed to have this redundant data, so based on your use case, you have to choose how to design your database or your tables. And when we see from number of tables, uh, in as we go through down through the normalization process or from the database perspective, there are a number of tables which are dependent to each other, but in the denormalized or in the warehouse uh, data structure um, database structure you don't have that much number of tables so the number of tables are decreased because no redund uh, redundancy is allowed so you can have number of you can have number of tables there and disk space uh, you, um, from the disk space perspective this database will optimize the disk usage, but in data warehouse, you have some wastage there. So based on your use case, you can uh, try to create those either of the two mechanisms for your uh, data model schema. So uh, according to the what we have discussed earlier, there is a normalization. So What's the basic idea behind this normalization in relational database is to avoid redundancy and dependency by minimizing this data insertion, deletion, and updation anomalies. So basically, uh, when you delete something, it doesn't disturb the whole uh, data structure. When you insert something, it doesn't have effect on the rest of the data which you have earlier. So in order to minimize this, we have five normal forms, starting from uh, first normal form, second normal form, third normal form, up to fourth and fifth. Basically, these three are necessary normal forms which we follow while we are designing database uh, for specific purpose. Uh, the rule for the first normal form is, uh, basically, the first thing is do you have any attribute that have multiple value for a single instance? Let's say one trainee can have 
one profile information that 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 will state his name, his email, uh, his LinkedIn profile, every information which is integrated to his profile. But at the same time, one trainee may have uh, another email for his profile, and he will have another records. But this is in principle. In one system, it, you don't have to register the number of uh, emails. For example, in 10x, we are restricting that. So we don't have this, in order to eliminate this redundant information, we will filter based on the classroom ID, which is gained from the Google class. So in order to, you have to avoid this repeated entries in, into one table, as well as Every entry should have to associate with a unique primary key. So in that case, there is no redundancy. One primary key will reside to one specific trainee. And also in one column, it will not be allowed to have the uh, different mixed data types. Like if you trainee have uh, date of birth, and that date of birth will allow only to have a date type, but someone have inserted um, what they call it, either numbers or a string. So this should have to be avoided in first normal form, whether you uh, trying to make things more easy to handle. Uh, on second normal form, so the second normal form is uh, in or, which is deals to uh, minimize this insertion updation anomalies. So every nine key, like every nine key column should have to be dependent on a key or a primary key. That means you have one or let's say one primary key, which you have in the table. And each of your columns have to be dependent on that specific uh, primary key column. But some of the things may require, let's say, if you have, like, you have week per week Slack data insertion or Slack data analysis for each week. And in one table, I can store your profile information with your Slack information. But as long as I don't have the uh, restriction to depend, maybe one trainee can have one many Slack uh, analysis. But how can I identify that one in terms of uh, when I insert one trainee's record? I have one primary. It's dependent on one the the primary key. For week one, I have inserted, but I come next time to insert for week two. How can I manage that in differently? And if I search for one uh, one update, I have to consider this week as another identifier for this specific trainee. So in this case, week will be the key to reduce this uh, anomaly detection. Uh, if I want to update without this key, maybe I can go there. I will use the primary key to update the Slack analysis, and which will be more difficult to get. Uh, maybe it makes error. I want to update the week one Slack analysis, but I'm going to update maybe week, week seven Slack analysis. So in, in this case, I have to provide yeah, uh, the dependency between the other uh, key columns that we which will uh, use uh, this week as a key. So I have two combined uh, keys in this table. So I should have to uh, my Slack analysis should have to be dependent on both the uh, Slack and the the ID, the primary key which I specified earlier, and also the key the week which I used as a key. So in this case, my table should will be on the second normal form. On 
it's her normal form or the one which she tries to avoid this transitive de dependency or uh, avoiding this drive attributes from the one which you have uh, in this normal form every, every nine key attribute should have to be dependent on uh, should not depend on any nine key attributes so if you have one key or number of keys in your database so those uh, nine key attributes should have fully dependent on them rather than any nine key attribute uh, this is the definition. Maybe I can show you some of the things which we have. So in database design life cycle, you have this analyzing the business need step uh, where you define the requirements for your database, how you design, what are the business uh, requirements, what's the, the use case, how you can identify it by asking or any other methods you can use. Then based on that, you can design the draft database outline or you can draft the data model which you will use. Then you will check the system requirement based on the system requirement. You will cross check the, that this one meets the design perspective, uh, the business need or you use specific use case. Then based on that, you will try to implement that one and test the data by loading this data and defining this calculation will be from uh, the perspective of query optimization how you optimize your query how you reduce the joins how if you find you will if you need a specific record and how you can parallelize things and how you manage the different data source for, to your database so this will be an iterative process and you will, based on your user comment, you will try to improve uh, as you go through the process. So uh, you will follow this, uh, maybe this is better to follow the iterative method of developing this database design for your specific use case. So, or high level data source for the one which we are, we are using for 10x and we have different data sources like a training data source, profile data source, uh, 10x system and job description training data source will have uh, training related informations like your grade, your submissions, your analysis results from Git and also anything related to the training will be uh, categorized under this training group then profile for your cv your linkedin your uh, 10 academy profile sites this information will be collected under this profile then 10x system from the one which provides us the data from the challenge document data from schedule document data from anything from the 10x and also logs from 10x system so this will be a 10x system uh, data source then from the job db uh, so basically this job will have the job related informations from job description specifically job skill extraction every related to job related to data will be stored here and based on transformation we will categorize them accordingly then uh, it will be after the transformation process it will go through each of the tables which we have for this specific uh, data source so based on that maybe i can explain more about this uh, the tool which we are using for database design uh, ebdiagram.io is the one which we are using for our database design and any Kavana or any floating tools for designing this data source, data format, data flow, how we can do things from uh, top to bottom are listed here. We can have this community G plus any challenge document we have those information from that and the git analysis which is uh, 
the G class information as well. And from that one, we have divided each Git class uh, Git analysis detail into number of Git tables. So, for example, here we, you can see that the GitHub user meta is there, GitHub user repo meta, GitHub user repo matrix, GitHub user repo matrix rank, and GitHub user repo matrix summary. According to their need, they will have a specific information about a specific project. For example, let's say uh, GitHub user repo meta will have your specific uh, repository, um, general repository information, like your username, email, profile image, anything related to this, to your GitHub. And uh, GitHub repo meta will have additional information in order to to have certain detailed information about the repo you have submitted for specific assignment and also how uh, how they are organized will be registered here. Then for GitHub repo metrics, we'll have the analysis detail, which we have uh, for each week. So every Git analysis will be stored here and it is dependent on use, your repo meta and your user meta to indicate that that specific repo metric analysis is your username, uh, is based on your username, and uh, which is linked to your, back to the trainee ID, which we have from our database. So basically, in order to have this normalized table, we have changed it into this way. Uh, if I go to one demo how to create one table, maybe I can have uh, this table structure, which specifies like any user how can be registered into our system in Go Phoenix. So this is their uh, full detail, then their name, email, nationality, and also anything related to their profile will be registered. And also I have their um, Slack analysis per week. So this will be week. Then the message itself, everything is specified here. But if I, if I have this as a database design, it will not be feasible for me to, uh, like to reduce this redundancy because for, 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 let's say for example, for one trainee, I can have a number of uh, weak uh, Slack analysis. So that means if I'm going to update one, one week analysis, I'm going to update the rest. So in order to avoid this one, I have to recreate another table, which says, uh, which stores only this week analysis and which have a link with this user. So maybe I can change this table into tables like this one maybe only I have I, I will select this as it is and Follow the first normal form. Uh, I have to have a primary key here as ID, and I have to specify it as primary key. Then let's let me make it int and. To allow this auto increment, I will use increment as attribute. Uh, then maybe I can categorize one user uh, Slack analysis detail here 
but it's have its own, it doesn't have any redundant thing because I have to add additional identifier to it. So, which is the all user ID link. This way, I can separate these two tables into two separate tables. Now I have removed this redundancy things, but still, wick is not the primary key here in my concept. So I have to make it as a primary key as well, or a foreign key. Yeah, let's have this as it is. Then the other thing which may allow the to error or to redundancy, maybe one trainee can have another profile information. Uh, so in order to separate this thing, we have to have additional uh, profile information, which can include the other trainees uh, use case, let's say So I have this separate table, but still I need to integrate with this all user to identify who, who is responsible to that. So all user will be this in type. And basically with this, we have specify the relationship with it. So how can we integrate maybe, let's say, one user may have uh, this multiple Slack analysis. So in that case, we have one to many relationship with these two tables. So I have to specify this relation there. One to many relationship, one from the all user side as well as many from the Slack analysis side. And in this case, from the profile information, maybe I want one to one info. What what I have forget is his the ID one. So we have direct one to our relationship with this one uh, from its ID. So in this case, we are using this DB diagram IO for designing our database schema, um, but it's much more uh, heavy to see. So I have created this separate demo point for that, but you are able to provide this relationships plus uh, separate and um, like as much as you can. You have you have to have multiple tables. Uh, 
in order to increase uh, to decrease this uh, what you call it dependency plus in order to minimize those anom insertion anomaly deletion anomaly plus updation anomaly so basically this is how we are doing uh, for 10x from the database design perspective if you have any question let me have Any question? Okay, hi guys. Um, so if you have, okay, can I go ahead and ask your question? <coughs> okay, uh, we have a primary key as indicated. Where we are we where we are using the foreign key. I think we need to have, if we have a relation between the tables about the foreign key, some explanation. Hello? So, uh, about the foreign key, maybe you have dependency from one table to another table. So, basically, you have to specify this uh, your primary key into the second table foreign key. Uh, you can specify that as a foreign key for on the second table. That will help you to design the foreign key dependency between your uh, keys which you have. Okay. Yes, Alexander. Go ahead, Alexander. I think. Or was key? Anyone? Okay. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. My question is uh, from the weak challenge perspective. Uh, I really and I understand how the database, database design is going to be designed and uh, what things has to be included. But my question is: now we are going to test, or we are going to work on back back tests with different testing strategies, so that uh, we can have uh, different indicators for each uh, strategies, and we can have uh, different table for each strategies, but. How can we make a relationship between those two strategies? I think there is a, uh, <clears throat> in the interim submission, we are going to submit the entity relationship diagram. So if we are thinking about entity or AR diagram, we are considering, we are uh, we will have entities. Those entities will have attribute and those entities are going to have a relationship among them. So how, how could we are going to relate or how, how, how are we going to be create a relationship between those entities, even if similar for the, when we come back to the database, uh, we are assuming we will have different tables and those tables will have a relationship among them accordingly. So how is going to be a uh, thing we are supposed to do with the with respect to the weak challenge? Maybe Azaria or Nardos can explain more about the weak challenge, but uh, from my understanding on the back testing, you can provide based on your data, you can have a certain database model or database design. So if you have clear understanding about what you have uh, or what you are going to do in the future, uh, what's back testing, how you can implement this, what type of data for your back test. So based on that, you can have a certain database model uh, or database design or a certain tables which we have, which you will include. Uh, these attributes and relationship between them. Maybe Azaria or um, Nardos, someone from the tutors may can explain more about the challenge. Um, 
No, actually, I think um, um, I might have missed some parts of Kowalski's question, but yeah, definitely Mohalit's answer is uh, clears things up. Yeah, you you have the different scenes, um, you have the different the different metrics, um, or the different results that you get um, from each backtest that is run, right? And so there are multiple actors that are actually in place uh, during this project. Um, yeah, and um, does does that answer the question? Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, or can you, can you maybe repeat? It? Yeah. Yeah, we will have multiple scenes. So those scenes, as uh, for example, they are belonging to a specific testing strategy. Similarly, we can have more than one like that. But how we are going to design the database? In a way that those uh, have a relationship among them, something like that. Um, yeah. So, like, what a scene is is um, is just a like a single deterministic uh, is going to lead to a single deterministic backtest output, right? So, as if a single scene has a specific start date, it has a specific end date, um, and has a specific indicator, um, and maybe other parameters. Um, encapsulated in it, right? It's just a simple JSON or IN95. Um, so that scene is deterministic. So that that it, that in itself can be stored in the table. And depending on the metrics that um, one of the, on the report submissions, you're supposed to submit the metrics that you're actually going to use um, to evaluate um, your, your algorithms. So even the outputs of those back tests and the metrics um, have relationships within within those scenes themselves. So if the scenes can are stored in one table, um, they can be referencing different entities um, on maybe the backtest results table and so on. And so yeah, uh, the design is up to you based on the things that you're uh, going to do and the approach that you're taking. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Maybe you can go. Okay, uh, my question uh, might be off context, but uh, I saw that uh, you've uh, like shown us the ER, ERD diagram of the TNX system. So, uh, so the, and uh, like previously, uh, we also see that you're using uh, what? Yeah, Strapi as a, a CMS. So. Uh, is that a, is there any like way to uh, like design your uh, database and like integrate it there? I mean, in Strapi, there is uh, it is difficult to create uh, joins, uh, design joins because like we only uh, use the user interface to uh, like design our relationship between the tables. So, how did you uh, manage to? Uh, like incorporate this complicated data structure or database schema to uh, Strapi, or do you use uh, a separate like a uh, backend uh, service to do that? And you use just uh, Strapi for only like CMS specific tasks? Uh, um, from the Strapi usage perspective, we are using Strapi only for the CMS and the debugging will be treated uh, separately. But uh, to answer your, your questions, uh, more or less, we are using this um, CMS to have the user management clearly and role, role, role identification. Rather than that, we didn't use that much from the Strapi. Okay, so you have a separate like, database that you use to like do all of that uh, Slack database. integration, RDS GitHub. Is, yes, RDS oh. with Strapi. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but what, my question is uh, uh, like uh, when we use Strapi as a, like we could uh, use Strapi beyond the CMS, right? So, uh, like, if we do that, we have to design our 
uh, APIs to like fit our needs. So to do that, like we have to create our databases and relationships and everything. So if we have a complex uh, relationship between the tables, uh, because like if, if we want to denormalize our data, or I mean normalize our data, we must like have a lot of joins uh, to do that. So well, how do you how did you like manage to do that? That's that was my question. But if you have a, a separate like a, a backend, maybe written in a, a fast API or like uh, Express JS, whatever that is, uh, yeah, it could that could be possible. So like I was just wondering, uh, are you using that or you're solely using uh, Shopee? That was my question. Anyhow, it's off context, so uh, yeah, never mind. So maybe let me add one thing which you can have this customized, uh, you, you can have the option to customize Strapi as well to make more changes and more uh, applications to incorporate. But for now, we are using this uh, Strapi and the separate API provider like Flask. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's, that answer is it. Thank you. Any question? Then, if not, thank okay, you. Uh, thank you, Mahalis, for the lovely tutorial. If you guys don't have a question, then let's thank Mahi and let's end the, the session.